Hello and welcome to our next lecture uh, in the sensation or perception portion of our physiological psychology series. Today we're going to be talking about the vestibular system. And the vestibular system is also known as our body's balance and orienting system and is primarily located in the inner ear. When people talk about having an inner ear infection and they feel dizzy, it's the vestibular system that's usually uh, affected that causes that kind of dizziness. So we're going to talk first about the location and function of the vestibular system. So the vestibular system is located in the inner ear. And it consists primarily of uh, the semicircular ducts or semicircular canals, a utricle, and the saccule. These all have their own functions. The semicircular canals or ducts are, are, uh, have a primary function of coding for angular momentum. So whenever you tilt your head to the side, forward, around, uh, and essentially their function is to work in direct uh, collaboration with our uh, uh, ocular muscles to keep our eyes and balance system sort of in check. So whenever you tilt your head, you d the world doesn't tilt with you. Um, so that is, we still see things in the same way we did before. Um, and so the uh, ocular system and or the ocular motor system and the vestibular system work in direct conjunction with one another. And we'll talk about what happens when those things get out of sync, like with motion sickness. So uh, located deep within the uh, inner ear, just attached to the cochlea are the semicircular canals and the rest of the vestibular apparatus. And the information exits via the vestibular nerve right along next to the auditory nerve. So the function of these are to help us maintain our balance, so our posture and our equilibrium. And it allows us to stabilize our, eye, stabilize our eyes relative to our environment. And so these tell us if we're moving, what direction we are, and what orientation we are in. Um, so they fulfill a really important function. <coughs> there are two types of movement that, that the vestibular system can um, tell us about. Rotation, which is angular acceleration, and linear acceleration, which just tells us if we're moving forward or if we're moving up and down. Whereas if we're moving sideways or tilting our head or spinning around, that would be angular acceleration. So the semicircular canals are primarily designed to detect angular acceleration and deceleration of the head. And there are three canals corresponding to the three different dimensions, sort of an X, Y, and Z plane that allow uh, us to have information about whether we're upright, upside down, sideways, etc. So each of these is filled with fluid, which is called endolymph. Uh, within each canal is a cupula and an ampulla, and these bend, these have hair cells that bend, just like in the auditory system, that code for movement. So whenever we move our head, that fluid uh, moves and causes bending of the cupula. Now when we get intoxicated, the viscosity of that endo endolymph changes, and it actually pushes the cupula harder, which is one of the reasons why our balance and orienting gets out of whack when we get particularly intoxicated. Also because there is some reduction in functioning in the uh, cerebellum, which processes a lot of this information. And so there's some controversy about exactly whether it's lymph or um, a slowdown of the central nervous system. Uh, but this alteration in the central nervous system causes a change in the coding of that information, which is why we can get out of balance. So as the fluid pushes the cupula, action potentials are generated in those hair cells. Uh, just like uh, when a sound wave passes through the uh, cochlea, uh, that gets generated into action potentials here. Motion of our head gets generated into action potentials. So if the movement is constant, our system ad adapts to that movement, which is why if we're in the car, if we're on a train, on a plane, if we're on a plane, we don't really notice that we're moving once we've actually taken off um, because we've sort of adapted to that actual movement. But once you stop, the fluid, sudden, the fluid stops suddenly and sort of sloshes in the opposite direction. And if you think about what happens if you stop in the car and you have a drink in your hand, that moves forward. Which is why you can kind of get giddiness if you get moved around a lot. This is one of the reasons why some of us enjoy, some of us don't enjoy, uh, carnival rides. Because we're really kind of, they're really designed to mess with the semicircular canals. And so that's why some people can get motion sickness if they are on those for too long. Other people just really like it. Um, that kind of giddiness results from that sudden changes in movement. One of the things uh, that's important to understand about the vestibular system is what's called the vestibular ocular reflex. So the three planes of rotation uh, for the vestibular system are matched by our eye muscles. And our eyes can automatically adjust to rapid head movement 
but not to other rapid movements that are externally generated. Uh, and so this is one of the reasons why people can get motion sickness because their eyes are not triggering motion, but their vestibular system is. And so we can't quite get things adapted correctly. So we do know that the visual system helps to calibrate the vestibular system. In fact, um, the visual system sort of is the master over this vestibular ocular reflex most of the time, which is why you can end up feeling like you're moving when actually you're not moving at all. We call this implied motion. So what happens with implied motion is your visual system tricks you into thinking that you've moved. Now this can happen um, sort of out in the environment. So for example, if you're sitting at a stoplight and the car next to you rolls backwards, you can suddenly think that you're moving forward um, and slam on the brakes. And this happens to people all the time. Or if you're standing on a train and the train next to you moves, it feels like you've moved and you see people actually almost fall because they've been tricked into thinking that they move. Now, there are also implied motion rides. Um, there are amusement park rides and all sorts of other rides that can use implied motion. And usually what they do is they have a movie that looks like you're moving, and then they actually have a little bit of motion, so it just tilts you back and forth and forward, and it makes it, feels like, makes it feel like you're actually moving. And so that's a, a form of implied motion where the visual system tricks you into thinking that you're moving, and your vestibular system feels it as well. Now, one of the things that can go awry in this area is motion sickness, because what's happening is usually your vestibular system is registering motion, but your uh, visual system is not. So for someone who gets seasick, one of the best things you can do, uh, it, weather permitting, if you're in a on a boat, on a cruise ship, no matter what kind of boat you're on, is to go outside and to look at the, hor the horizon. So you can see that horizon coming up and down. One mistake people always make is they think that drinking is going to help their motion sickness. It will not. It will always make it worse. Alcohol is not a treatment for motion sickness. There are treatments. Uh, of course, there are over-the-counter remedies, or you can get a prescription uh, for scopolamine. And scopolamine is usually the go-to uh, prescription drug of choice for motion sickness. Now, if you're someone who gets sick in the car, you should probably avoid reading. And it really is better to sit in the front seat because your visual system will register that motion. Now, one of the exceptions to the visual system sort of mastering the vestibular system is uh, when you are overly intoxicated and you get the bed spins. And what happens here is your uh, vestibular system is so completely out of whack that when you lay down, it feels like things are spinning because that the vestibular system is over, overly sensitive to your motion, and so as a result, it feels like things are moving. And in fact, you will see things moving when they are actually are not. So based on the fact that alcohol can uh, really disrupt the vestibular ocular reflex is the basis for sobriety testing, for roadside sobriety testing. So there are a number of things an officer will put you through if you're being uh, tested in roadside sobriety. Uh, that are designed to test your balance and orienting system. And these are things like that finger-to-nose movement. Oftentimes they have you standing on one foot, tilting your head backward with your eyes closed to see if you can touch your finger to your nose. Uh, the hor horizontal gaze nystigmus. This is where they will have you follow a light or their finger or something of that sort. And they're looking to see whether or not you're able to, capable of conducting smooth pursuit eye movements to see if your oculomotor ocul reflex is intact. Uh, if it's not, then you won't be able to engage in those smooth pursuit eye movements. Uh, the one leg stand, also designed to test your balance and orienting system. Again, that we usually have you close your eyes uh, for this. It's much harder to do. Uh, walking and turning, again, all are designed to test impairment in your vestibular system. So all this has to do with that vestibular ocular reflex. So finally, the last thing to talk about in this area is linear acceleration. This is sort of forward and up and down movement. And I'm just simply going to say the utricle um, is designed to detect horizontal movement, so forward, backward, sideways, and the saccule det detects uh, upward and downward, um, sorry, <laughs> upward, up and down and forward and backward, whereas the utricle uh, side to side. So the saccule and the utricle um, also code for three dimensions, but usually more about linear acceleration, not that kind of angular momentum that we talk about with the uh, anterior, posterior, and horizontal canals. Well, that's a quick introduction to the vestibular system. There are a number of, the, of diseases that can affect the vestibular system and its functioning um, and can be very disruptive because they cause people to have uh, things like vertigo um, all of the time, so they just dizzy all the time. 
All right. Well, thank you. And uh, we will be back with uh, more sensory processing in our next lecture.